With this video, I will show you a quick start on the user interface of Move Recorder 3, how it's working, and all the, uh, the IDs behind. So this is the user interface of Move Recorder 3. You have on the left-hand side uh, a drawer where you can see the different sources that you have available on your Mac. Depending on the video card that you're using, you will see different sources. Here, for example, you can see that I have an IO 4K and I can see the four independent inputs of the IO 4K. In order to use any of these inputs, I need to enable them. To enable them, it's pretty easy. Just tick the checkbox and once it is enabled, you are able to use it as a source in one of the viewers that are on the right hand side. So you can see I have enabled the source and select the source in the pop-up menu on the top left hand side of each viewers. And you can see now that I'm ready with one source getting in with recorder. There is one warning telling me no destination enabled. So what are destinations? Destinations are set over here. And you can see that I have, have by default, I have one that is already created. A destination is a combination. If I click on the little uh, settings button there, I will have the ability to change the settings. You can see that for these ProRes to Movies destination, I can set multiple things. I can set a location, so where the file will be recorded. I can point to any folder that I want. By default, it points to the movies folder. Uh, you have an option to say if you want to erase the existing file or not. So if there is a file that already exists at the location with the same file, if the option is enabled, we will delete it. If it is disabled, we will append a number next to the file name. Then you have a choice between different uh, ways of uh, recording the non segmented and classic file types. Uh, I will go just pretty quickly uh, with that. Um, none is pretty easy to understand. It means that it's a regular file and it's not edit while ingest. The uh, segmented is an edit while ingest file. It's a mo more modern way to, to do it, but it's a file types that are not always supported by all editing uh, station. Um, I think to my knowledge, there is only Final Cut Pro 10 that supports it currently. Uh, the advantage of that is that you don't need to set a duration. You see when I enable the segmented file type, I don't need to set duration. Also, uh, it supports more codecs um, than with the classic mode. The classic mode is how Move Recorder 2 uh, used to create the files. So these are edit while ingest file for which you need to set a duration. So we'll create a file with the duration and with the same options as you had with Move Recorder 2, update Move Duration when, the, when stopping. This means that uh, when uh, you stop recording, we will update the duration of the file to the real duration. So if you only recorded 30 minutes out of the one hour that was set here, uh, you will have a file that is only 30 minutes. If you disable that option, it means that the file will remain to the duration that you have set there. And thus, if you only record 30 minutes, you will have 30 minutes of black at the end of the file. The loop recording is pretty useful for time shifting, where uh, once we reach the set duration here, the one hour, uh, we will start recording back at the beginning. And this is pretty useful for time shifting. Um, then, once you have set the file tab that you want to record, you can set the codec. You can see here that for the classic type, as I said, uh, less codecs are supported. So we don't support, for example, the H.264 or the H.264 codecs. And if I enable segmented, you see that now I have access to the, the H.264. Same thing for none, I will have access to the H.264 codecs. Um, then, the last thing here is the auto switch, which is enabled only also in these two modes. So in the known and segmented, you can set uh, the file to automatically switch after an hour of recording. So what it will do is that it will record for an hour and after an hour, it will create a new file without losing frames. So this is pretty useful when you want to record 24 seven and don't want to lose a frame, just start recording and you stop recording when you're done for as long as you want. Um, you can see that 
for the classic mode, the option is disabled. This is because uh, there will be, an, in fact, an auto switch that will be done after the dura duration that you have set there, unless, of course, you are in loop mode. So these are for the destinations, just to explain what is a destination. It's a combination of uh, the where you want to record, but also the codecs, the file types, and all that. Uh, you can create as many destinations as you want. You can create a, a new one here. And currently we uh, only support QuickTime types. There will be MXF and HLS type of destinations. If you create a new one, you can set another name to it, how you want to record, and all that. Once you have created your destinations, for each bureau, for each source, you will be able to select one or more destinations. This means that you can record to multiple codecs, have a high res and a proxy to record the high res to two locations at the same time. And just by ticking that checkbox, you see that now the warning is gone and I have the record button that is ready. And if I just hit record, I am now recording and I can easily go there and you see the, this little uh, icon and this points me to the, the file that is being recorded. And you can open it. You see it's a classic movie, it's a one hour duration file, and you just can simply uh, play it. I will just put it mute, and here you can play while it's recording, and if you go a little bit further, it's black there because it's not yet recorded. So it's a, it's a regular uh, edit while ingest file that we used to do with Move Record 2. You have different things uh, here. You can see that you have the pause top button. You also have a timer. This timer is pretty nice if you want to uh, to stop recording after a given time. So you can set I want to record, uh, stop the recording after two minutes. Okay, so this is our minutes apply, and it will automatically stop recording after uh, two minutes of record. So that's pretty useful. Uh, now I can enable more sources. If I see there, and I can enable these ones, okay, and I can now have a preview of the different sources. And now I've got all my four sources. This is the same signal that is broadcasted, that is inputted in the uh, different inputs of my IO4K, but you can see now that I have the four inputs already. So this is uh, pretty easy to, to set up. The sources, you can of course uh, go to this little settings and set which format inputs, uh, which audio settings, and what time code you're going to be using. When we'll see this recording, you see that the recording has stopped now because we are, we've reached the two minutes that I have set. You can also uh, do gang record. How you do it, it's by selecting the different, you see that when I click uh, it gets blue around it, so it means that it's selected. You see it over there too. And like that, I have selected the four uh, sources, but of course I will need to first enable destinations. And here we go. All right, so my four sources, I'm ready. And here below, we have the gang actions. There is, in fact, the gang naming. So I will rename him, my recording, apply. And you see now that all the files, the name has been changed down there. I can manually set it or I can uh, apply gang uh, naming. Now, I will just hit the record button and you see that now all the recording have started on all the different inputs. There is also one thing that you can do is to schedule your recordings. To schedule your recordings, you need to go open that drawer and in that drawer you can uh, create multiple schedules. Uh, so I'll create just one and you see there is an attention sign because there is yet no sources, no destinations assigned to it. I can give it a name. I can say what time it is, if it's repeated every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, not Friday, for example, or on specific date and at what time it will start and at what time it will end. 
for each of the scheduled recording, I will select what will be the source and on which destination that I will use. And now you see that I have uh, this, these little buttons that tell me uh, when it's repeated, the start time, end time, the duration, what is the sources that is used and what destination is used. And I can just tick the checkbox in order to enable or disable a schedule. And as soon as I reach uh, that time, the source will start to record to that destination. There are other different options here. Uh, you can preview more or less uh, viewers. You can see now that uh, some are a little bit uh, lighter than others. It's because depending on the size of your window, you'll be able to accommodate more or less viewers. If now I go and resize my window, then go there, you see that I can now select much more uh, viewers at the same time, if I had all these sources, uh, they will be available uh, for me to use. Um, let's go back to 4. You can also uh, change the viewers, how they are displayed. Currently, we, we view only 4, but you can have up to 16 inputs depending on the uh, audio inputs that you have. And the TC here just displays or not the incoming timecode. We support multiple uh, timecode sources. Uh, either it will be the video card timecode, or you can go into preferences, the timecode preference, and say what's the timecode source for your application, either the Mac clock, audio LTC, or timecode buddy. In the preferences, there, there are also the AV presets. Because as we have seen in the destinations over here, I'll open that, you ha we select AV preset, and you see that we, we create by default a few, so you don't have to worry, but you can create your own uh, presets as well, and you can modify them. I'll select that one, for example. You can select the codec that you want to use, Apple H.264 pass-through, so it's uncompressed, that's what we receive. And in H.264, you're able to select which type of profiles, the bit rates, the size, and also for the audio, if it's linear, PCMA, AC, or pass-through, which is uh, the uncompressed. So that is for the uh, quick overview of the Mover Record 3 user interface. If you have more questions, go on our website, go on the support desk, softron.zendesk.com, check the knowledge base there, and if you don't find your answers there, just don't hesitate to submit a ticket and we'll reply as quick as possible.